Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. On those days, especially on those days, when you do not feel like it, get up, make the coffee, and get on about your day. It's time to kick your own ass. (laughs) I know, I know, come on, I know. There have been plenty of days laying in bed. An extra 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or even an hour. There have been more late to work days than you can count. There have been so many hours lost. Not thinking overthinking. It's time to find yourself again. It's time to take care of you. I saw a quote this morning and it was about how it was advice basically about Stop trying to get other people to care about you. Stop. Just stop trying to get other people to care about you, to want you, to love you, to understand you. Just stop. Just stop all of that. It's a waste. It's a waste of time and energy. It's a waste of breath. Focus on you. You care about you. I was like, hmm. Instead of wasting all this time trying to convince other people how great you are, how about you just be great? (laughs) How about that? Imagine that. (laughs) How about we come back to our center and be who the fuck we are? Okay. All right. I'm feeling pretty badass, I guess, especially considering I have my pajamas on and I'm still cuddled up in bed. However, truth be told, I've been up for over an hour journaling, preparing for a Celtic wheel program that I'm starting in about a week. And I've been journaling the pre-work, you know, the whole reflection piece. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, oh, just wait. Wait. Viewers, (laughs) Viewers, listeners, <laughs> it's coming because we are nearing the winter time. We are entering into the holiday seasoning of the year. <laughs> and that means people will start to be reflective and nostalgic and remember back upon the times and old relationships and old experiences with fonder memories than what actually happened. Normal totally normal. And that's okay. Amplify the good. You might as well, right? Amplify the good. Rewrite your fucking story. Do it. If that gets you through the night, fine. But now is the time of year where not only are you going to get bombarded by ads to buy stuff, to prove your love to people by buying them things and giving them things, or by that you receive love by people paying for things for you or giving you gifts. Yeah, yeah, I know. Commercialism, consumerism, capitalism. I know, I know, I know all that. But we all know how the cycle goes, right? And so along with that, on the tail end of that, you will also get the promotional self-help. Well-meaning people who will remind you to journal And to look back on your year and to reflect that now is the time to reflect on the year, to see how far you've come, what are your biggest disappointments, what are your deepest regrets, what are the things you've learned, how have you grown. And you know what? Out of all these things that I just mentioned, that is probably the most beneficial. And the truth be told, you should be doing that all along. You should be checking in with yourself. We, you and I, all of us. We should be having self-check-ins. We shouldn't just be spending these hours extra in bed or 
investing in the Kleenex tissue company because we are dealing with it, going through it, feeling like crap. We should be checking in. We should be being proactive. We should be feeling into our feelings. When have you actually done that? Instead of waiting until your feelings come bubbling out and overflowing like lava or spewing all over the place, making a huge mess of things, making things worse than they actually are because you just needed to get those emotions out. If you actually checked in with your feeling and your emotion, maybe you wouldn't care so much about how other people are making you feel. Maybe you wouldn't use the people around you to feel good or as an excuse to be in a poor, crappy, awful mood because you react this way because these people are like this, right? Does that sound familiar, that blame game? Oh, oh, it works both ways. Since we're taking this moment to recognize this whole nearing the time of reflection, looking over the course of our year, let's do that right here, right now, and just be truthful. Can you be honest with yourself? Can you be, even when it hurts? Because you hurt anyway, Do you see? You're not avoiding pain. You're just prolonging the slow burning agony of the suffering. You're choosing to suffer. So tell yourself the truth. Are other people really making you feel good? Are other people really making you feel bad? And if that's the case, you are substituting. You are hiding from your own feeling. Why? Like, what good is that? What purpose is that? What purpose? What does that serve? The truth is, when you check in with yourself, when you honor the relationship with you, if you care more about you than trying to get somebody else to care about you, you win. You get true abundance you get the exact type of love that you are looking to other people to provide you. Love starts with dignity. That you give yourself a solid pillar, a core foundation of the purest form of who you are, which at your essence as a spirit, as a soul, as a speck of God, you already are that. You were born that, you haven't lost that. No matter what trauma you've been through, no matter what horrific life experiences you've had or things that you have done, you are God, goddess, starlight, sun. You are light, pure, true. Honor that damn light right here, right now, and be truthful with yourself. Ooh, ooh, I didn't expect this to come through. Mm, 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 mm. So let me share with you. Let me just share with you this, some of this pre-work here. So you're going to get these from all your favorite life coaches, I'm sure. So let's just, let's just uh, start with the prep work. So Over the course of the last year, since last November at this time, it's a Celtic wheel, people, so it follows the Celtic High Holy Days. You know, Samhain is one of them, which is coming up um, 31st to November 1st, etc. All right, so um, moments of death and letting go. Let's start on a positive note. Moments of death and letting go this past year. Mm. Wow, that's intense. Okay. The next one is moments of waiting and emptying. Okay. That's hopeful. But it's true. These things are true. Moments of awakening and new beginnings. Okay. These things are deep, right? And I don't expect you to start there. Of course not. Of course not. But these are deep. And this is really a time. Opportunity is knocking to reflect. Stop and catch your breath. I'm not telling you to do a whole, let's look back over this and have this whole conversation about what we could have done better, what we learned, all that stuff. 
Let's just stop for a moment here in the now and take a breath. Just catch your breath. Stop running. Stop running. You're on a treadmill. You're going nowhere. You're exhausting yourself. Just stop. Take a breath. Oh, yeah, just like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Feel yourself. Feel the softening of your body, the calming of your heart. When you bring your awareness in to you as the center of the universe, that is you. And from this place, you are pure. You are holy. You are the connection, the intimacy, the love that you have been seeking outside of yourself. You are these things. Catch your breath in this moment and feel the truth of the words that I'm saying to you. Feel your truth. Find the beauty in the honesty. The emotions and the feelings that you've had, the projections outward, the blame, the anger, the desperation for love or validation or value. These are natural human things. Consider this human. You're human. And when you can slow down for a moment, take a breath and be with what is true for you inside, from who you are at your core, pure light, you will absolutely find and source everything you need. from you. You are the answer. You. You are the healer. You. You are absolutely everything. I know it is a challenge for the mind to believe this, to know this to embody this truth. And yet it is. Miraculous. Intended to be so. Take a nice breath in. And an exhale out. Nice. I actually see Archangel Metatron, so I'm going to make a nod to Archangel Metatron, who I consider my energetic chiropractor. Metatron has a gorgeous, kind of a gray, muted gray lavender color, like a lilac color. Soft, but strong. So in alignment with his divine feminine. Metatron works with the grids of energy and can support you as you are supporting yourself. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to ask yourself these really deep questions about (laughs) death and letting go or new beginnings and fresh starts or your disappointments. And you don't have to do it in an overwhelming way looking back over the last year and before you step into the new year, whatever that looks like for you. Don't get pressured by that. Don't feel pressured by that. 
Okay? Don't feel pressured by that. Instead, make a commitment to yourself to listen more deeply to you, to have more moments of intimacy with yourself, to really know, feel the knowing that exists in the wisdom inside you as to what you truly want in the moment and in your life. Simple choices, small opportunities to show up for you in the ways that you choose. This is what empowering yourself is. This is what empowerment is. You choosing. You. It is a relationship. It is a commitment. You have to care more about you and how you feel about you and how other people, someone else, feels about you. And that is hard. Especially when we're taught all the time by, giving, by being given rewards for things we do, for things we say, for how we make people feel. There's this whole, whole system that is a compensation system based upon how you make someone feel you get paid back. So if you make someone feel good and you show up and you're happy, even if you feel like shit inside, but you present your best self, then you get an atta girl or an atta boy and you get love, scraps of love from someone else. But in those moments when you defy and deny the truth of how you feel when you're showing up, And instead, faking it, not only are you lying, you are putting yourself under for someone else to be over. You are giving up your power. And there are a lot of people in life that you will be in relationship with that will gladly take your power. The system of debt and owing, it just is perpetuated. But you don't have to buy into that cycle. You can step into relationships in awareness, whether it be at work, in love, in friendships. Step in with awareness, honoring your feelings, having first been with yourself, holding space for yourself, caring about yourself and your feelings first, and then showing up in relationship to another. I know there's definitely a dynamic out there about someone's broken and then someone swoops in to save them and be the angel that fixes them and helps them and then they owe them for the rest of their life. No, that was never intended. There was never intended to be that hierarchical hierarchy in humanity where there were broken people and healer people, fixers. Because whether the fixers realize it or not, they're preying upon people that they perceive that are less than them so that they can enhance their value. And that is the truth. And it's harsh, but it's true. And we've all been there. Because when you can help someone feel better about themselves, you feel good about yourself. And while that seems natural, it's also a level of using and manipulating someone else's need so that you can have value. Ooh, that's harsh, I know. I know, but it's true. So you must be in autonomous, authentic awareness so that you know who you are, you're committed to you, so that then when you do show up in a relationship, you know that you're not trying to take from someone else or give to someone else for your own benefit of a lack inside of you, but from a pure, pure exchange and free-flowing sharing of love. Where is that in your life? The free-flowing sharing, truly sharing. You don't owe me, I don't owe you. Even if someone says you don't owe them, or even if they present like that, there is always this undertone of debt or credit. You're bartering your value. Why do we do this? Because we've made humans 
and love and feeling into commodity. It's like a compensation system. Really talking about value and caring for yourself and taking care of yourself and kicking your own ass so that you can show up for you first and then others. Because when you're authentic and you're, you're in the know about your own feelings, nothing will really catch you off guard. Other people's crazy shit that they say will not take you down. Or somebody else projecting their own bad feelings or crabbiness on you doesn't take you out either. Turns out that the way to help an empathic person feel like they can handle life is for them, you, to commit to yourself, to recognizing your feelings and emotions are legit. Nobody else is to blame for how you harbor those feelings, how you keep them or hold on to them. When they come up, learn, listen, feel. Release, learn, listen, feel, release, learn, listen, feel, release. Write in your journal. Check in with yourself. Don't wait until the end of the year and then have this huge mountain of, oh shit, this year fucking sucked. Or I can't even remember the good stuff. What the hell happened? Oh my God, what happened? And then you have this whole experience like you're watching your life like a movie. It's crazy. Don't wait for somebody to save you. Nobody's coming to save you. That's you. The people who show up like they're going to save you, guess what? Those people have motives within themselves, whether they're conscious of it or not, myself included, to feel good about themselves because they helped you. And while in many ways that's kind and human and how we connect, but is it real? Is it deep? Is it a soulful connection and an exchange for our highest good? Is it? We deserve better. We deserve the absolute most beautiful connection with divine. Do you want to know God? Do you want to know pure Holy Spirit? Do you want to know the universe, the cosmos, the wisdom of all, the purest form of love. Do you want to know that? Do you want that? Do you? Secretly, perhaps subconsciously, that is what you are seeking. And that is inside of you because you are that. You are that piece of that one. And when you are connected to that oneness, you are whole. Whole and holy, complete and pure totally pure light, 100% love. And that is the point of all this madness of a life. So this is Bridget. It has been my pleasure to have conversation with you this morning. This has been an interesting Sunday morning coffee. Sure has woken me up a bit. And now I will meander up the stairway choose a coffee pod, pop it in my Nespresso, and we're off to the races on this beautiful, well, it's going to be warm today. Actually, I'm recording this on Saturday. You'll hear it on Sunday, but it's going to be a little warm today, so it's good. It's good. We'll see what the day brings. I have a couple of invites, and I'm not sure what I'll choose to do. We shall see. We shall see. I can tell you one thing. I'm grateful for these moments when I feel myself authentically and purely. I feel me. I actually feel me. And I want that for you, too. Don't be scared. Don't be scared to know yourself. Because yourself, just like with me, we're pure. We're light. We're just love inside. We're God. We're source. We're creator, we're universe. We really, really are. And there are moments where you will feel that, I promise. But you have to want to to commit to care more about yourself than anybody else.
this requirement. So I hope I've inspired your spirit today. Filled you with some hope and some truth. There's lots of truth in here. We talked a lot about truth in here and you caring about you, okay? (laughs) Hmm. Thanks so much for listening.